All right. Well, we're going to uh, go ahead and get started. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this great opportunity to be in your house, Lord God, where we get to be together in your presence, oh God. And Father, thank you, Lord God, for your blood. Thank you, Lord God, for your life that has been poured out for us so that we will know Jesus. We will know, Father, that we would be in right standing. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you have been given to us as our counselor, as our teacher. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would teach us through the word today. Holy Spirit, we give you the room in our hearts, our minds, so that we can hear what you have to say, oh Lord. Father, help me get out of the way. Let us be, Lord God, guided by your spirit tonight, or today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, so let me just start out with um, Apostle Paul. If you've been in church for any time, you've heard of the Apostle Paul. Even if you haven't been in church, you've heard of the Apostle Paul. He actually spoke in the New Testament, but he, he drew back to Old Testament stories. And he wanted to make sure the church knew, don't throw out the Old Testament because the Old Testament has instruction. In the Old Testament, how many know, if you've been here at Word of Life for some time, Jesus is in the Old Testament too. And Paul said to uh, the people of God, he says, now these things, talking about the, the Old Testament, these things happen to them as an example. But they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. You know, these Old Testament stories, they teach us how to live for the Lord and how not to live for the Lord. They are uh, moments given to us to show us how people either fully relied on God or fully relied on themselves. And uh, the Apostle Paul is saying, take from the Old Testament. And we're going to get into the Old Testament today from 2 Samuel chapter 5. For those who brought their Bibles, I can see you already grabbing for that. That's awesome. But otherwise, it will be on the screen. 2 Samuel chapter 5 is where we're going to go today with a two-part series this week and next week called God is on the Move. God is on the move, if you don't know that. God is on the move. Let's begin uh, in just a moment here with 2 Samuel 5, verse 3. Let's set the stage. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. Somebody shout anointed. 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 David waited for a very long time, if you know the story about his life, waited for a very long time to be set in as king. He wasn't looking for it, but God appointed him. It was actually, uh, he was first put in seven and a half years prior to this as king of Judah, a small part called Judah. But now, seven and a half years later, he is being set in as king over all of Israel. Israel had its civil war. It is over. And they have said, you are the appointed and anointed king. And so it's interesting, if you think about it, he was anointed as a kid. But it wasn't until approximately 15 years later that he stepped into this position. I love about King David that he did not rush the process. He did not rush God on his timing. He was not forcing the hand of God. And I just want to say, this is not even going into the word today, but somebody just needs to cut it out. Stop forcing God's timing because God's timing is perfect. Go along the process. The process is divine. It's not a waste. And... It's just, uh, I really sense that to tell someone, no, don't rush God's timing because his timing is perfect. Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel 5, 10. So they anointed him king, and now it says, and David became more and more powerful because, somebody say because, because. the Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. David continued to grow stronger and stronger 
in the grace of God on his life. And he grew stronger, and he did not do uh, what was assigned to him on his own. The Lord of hosts was with him. And that's very true for many of you today. If someone hasn't told you lately, you are growing stronger and stronger in the Lord. You are growing stronger and strong stronger in the calling of God on your life. You are growing stronger and stronger in the grace of God on your life. And the reason why is because the Lord of hosts is with you. Come on, somebody say, the Lord of hosts is with me. So we see that he finally made it. And how many know, though, when you get a victory, there's often a testing on the other side of your victory. And David is about to go through a, a period of testing. He's about to face a valley because with every mountaintop, when you come off of the mountaintop, you go into a valley. And it matters what you do in the valley. It matters what you do in the testing. What you do in the valley matters to God. What you do in the valley matters to God. Go ahead and put that slide up there. Stay with me, buddy. Somebody tap them on the shoulder for me. Stay with me. What you do in the valley matters to God. That's a point. When you see it on the screen, that's a writing it down. All right. Stay with me. We're good. We're partners up here. All right. Let's see what David did in the valley. All right. In the valley, he experienced a valley. But because of how he handled the valley, it led to a move of God, an extreme move of God on his life. What you do in the valley, can God can respond with a great move of the Spirit. 2 Samuel 5, 17 and 18. When the Philistines heard, when the Philistines heard, when the Philistines heard, you know, there's some noise going on about you. There's some enemies talking about you. When they heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, they mobilized all their forces to capture him. But David was told they were coming. Hey, guys, they're coming. So he went into the stronghold. We're going to see in a few moments what he did in the stronghold, meaning a place of, of, of protection, a place of getting away from everything, all the chaos and Verse 18, the Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Rephaim. Okay, it says when the Philistines heard that he had been anointed. How many know when you start walking in your anointing, what God has called you to do, that there are some noises that the enemy starts to make around you? It's getting a little chaotic, a little uh, strange. Something is stirring and it's, it's uh, not, not good. Right, Because the enemy is throwing a hissy fit that you are stepping into what God has called you to do. And the devil does not like it. The devil comes to steal, steal kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. And do you know that the spirit of the living God, Jesus himself, lives within you? And therefore, you have that same calling Jesus has to, to destroy the works of the enemy. So when you begin to walk in your calling, you become a threat to the enemy of God. Do I have any threats to the enemies of God in the house? Let me hear your war cry. Do I hear it? have any threats are there any threats in the house that's what I thought you know you are a major threat when you begin to walk in divine purpose when you start making decisions to not just be a hearer of the word but a doer of the word you become a threat when you get water baptized you know that some people don't tell you that when you get water baptized you are declaring that Jesus Christ is my Lord, and I turn my back on the kingdom of darkness, and I face and walk in the kingdom of light, and the kingdom of darkness gets scared when you go under. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you become an even greater threat to the enemy's camp. 
Do you know that when you begin to search the scriptures, the enemy begins to tremble? Do you know that when you hit your knees in prayer, there is darkness that is starting to shake around you because you are a threat to the enemy's camp? And that's why these Philistines were shaking in their boots and wanted to uh, kill David. You know, some of you need to understand that, you know, just because you are walking in God's pathway does not mean it's going to be an easy pathway. Walking in God's will does not guarantee you an easy pathway. I don't know who told you that, but it's not true. But what is true is that you always have the victory. Some of you just need to understand some of the, the havoc playing around your life right now is because you're anointed. Because you have the oil on you. You smell like the anointing. You even look like the anointing. So no wonder you're in a situation and maybe your job is in an uproar right now. Maybe you're in a situation in your family right now because there's an anointing that you're carrying for your family. Maybe something is going uh, uh, crazy because the devil knows that you're about to burst forth and do something that you've never done before for the kingdom of God. And it's going to destroy the works of the enemy. So don't get scared when you get attacked. It just means that you're favored and you're anointed. Now, 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 side note, some, some attacks are just because you made some bad decisions. <laughs> and these Philistines, they were, they were coming to David not because he was making bad decisions, which we all know he did at times, but they, he was, they were coming after him because of the anointing on his life, which would bring a unity. Uh, there was once a civil war in Israel. Now they're coming together, and the anointing on David is growing stronger and stronger, meaning the land of Israel is becoming stronger. The people of God are becoming stronger and stronger. And who are these Philistines that are um, upset about it? These are these hostile enemies that uh, knew how to go to war. And they are not hunting David down to congratulate him. I heard you became king. I just wanted to congratulate you. Yeah, no, they, that's not why they were searching for them. They wanted to eliminate the threat. And these Philistines disdained the idea of Israel gaining power. You know, through the Old Testament, you can look through the scriptures and you'll see the, the name Philistines quite a bit because they're a very familiar enemy. They show up on the scene and they try to uh, constantly challenge the strength of Israel. Do you have any Philistines in your life that are trying to challenge your strength? And you'll see that these Philistines, especially when Saul would not rely on the Lord that the Philistines would often win. But there's times, like we're going to see, when they would fully rely on God when they would win. But on several times they would win and they would actually cause some of the Israelite people to, to turn away from Yahweh. But do you know that is the enemy's scheme? When I say enemy, I'm talking about the devil. I am talking about the devil. And he is trying to play the saints by trying to get them to fall for any little tactic, whether it's by a situation or through a person, to get them to turn their gaze off of Jesus and onto the world. But my eyes, you see, when I got baptized, said I'm not going to gaze on the world anymore. I'm going to gaze on the sun. I'm not going to gaze on my troubles anymore. I'm going to gaze on Jesus. But the enemy doesn't want you to gaze on Jesus because the moment you begin to fix your eyes on Jesus, the strength, your fortress, your strong tower is the moment that you become stronger and stronger in the anointing on your life. Here's something to know about David real quick. Some of you may know this from your time in the word is that David actually lived in Philistine territory for about a year and four months when King Saul ordered a hit on him. And David was running for his life, and out of fear, out of frustration, 
and out of confusion, he made a bad decision, and he went with the enemies. How many times have you made a bad decision because you were fearful and you found yourself in enemy territory? But these Philistines, there was a king named King Achish who kind of started to really trust David and David's men. And even though the rest of the Philistines were like, I got my eye on you. But David was um, their frenemy. Friend but enemy, you know. You know what they're like, right? They're the ones that you, you just know you just can't tell everything to. <laughs> that they, they can't be trusted with, uh, you know, the plans of God on your life, the, th- the secret things that he tells you. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. But anyway, David was, uh, and the Philistines uh, were frenemies. Um, but the Philistines, they tolerated David for a season until he became a threat. You know, it's actually not a great thing that you're, when your enemy can tolerate you. Let's not be a people that is tolerated by the enemy, but actually they're uh, threatening. They're being threatened by the people of God. And so he became a threat once he became king of all 12 tribes of uh, Israel. And you know what I really call these Philistines is a distraction. And I want to just remind some of you that it's just a distraction. You know that thing that has been trying to tell you that it's time for you to quit? That's just a distraction. That thing that has been trying to say, uh, maybe this is over, it's just a distraction. Maybe you need to see it for what it it really is. It's just a distraction on your life from the assignment of God. God put you there. God placed you there. And he's going to see it through. Don't let distractions take you out of your assignment. So I see these Philistines as just a distraction. He got, he got into the position that God always told him about. And he got in. And now the distraction came. But I want to say lift your eyes higher, not on the distractions, but on your Jesus, on your hope, on your strength. And then we see in, this, in that verse that uh, the Philistines, um, they, they put out their camp in the valley of Rephaim. Valley of Rephaim. You have to ask yourself, what does Rephaim mean? Well, Rephaim means giants. So therefore, they they deployed in the Valley of Giants. And let me just ask for, you know, asking sake is, do you ever feel like you're in a valley of giant obstacles? We're going to see what God does with those giant obstacles that are staring you down. They're trying to intimidate you. They are overwhelming. But we'll see that David didn't get distracted by these giant obstacles. You know, how many times, I don't know about you, but me, I get distracted by potato chips and chocolate. I got to get that right so I can not be distracted by anything else. Because there is an assignment on my life to be a healthy woman of God. And I can't fall for those distractions that would take me off of my assignment. Hum, oh, I just put it plain out there. Now I'm held accountable. Goodness gracious, why did I say that? But what did David do when these enemies were trying to distract him? Uh, 2 Samuel 5, 19. So David inquired of the Lord. Stop right there. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. As a good word right there. But David inquired of the Lord, it says, after he faced uh, that, those obstacles, the Philistines, what did he do? He inquired of the Lord, can I just make it a little bit plain and a little bit honest right now? Some of us need to stop taking unnecessary losses. Some of us need to stay, stop taking unnecessary losses and then blaming God. Because God never gave you the green light to begin with to get into that relationship, to get into that situation, to get into that circumstance. He never gave you the green light. But you wouldn't know that because you didn't seek the Lord. You sought your emotions. You sought your heart. But you didn't seek the Lord. And now you're blaming God saying, whoa, woe is me. But God says, will you take an evaluation of your life and recognize if you only prayed first, you would have a greater win and you wouldn't have these losses. 
You are being emotionally led, not spirit led. So here's the statement, if we inquire of the Lord first, we will find ourselves having more victories and less losses. Can I get an amen? amen. David inquired before the battle. David inquired before any action, and God responded to him and said, I will doubtless deliver the Philistines. You have a green light. Go. This is incredible because if you think about who we're saying inquired of the Lord when the Philistines came, remember, he's the one that no one else wanted to uh, face that Philistine giant and go to war with him. But David stepped up and said, I know the Lord is with me, and he killed the giant. Wait a minute, isn't David the one who has been victorious through all the battles that has come his way? Isn't David the one who slayed the bear? Isn't David the one who just made incredible decisions along the way to say, my God is my God, and you are just a Philistine. But he still, before this battle, you would think, David, you even spent time. You spent a year and four months with the Philistines. Surely you know some of their battle strategies. Why would you inquire of God first? Because he was a man who knew that I can't do anything unless God is with me. I can't do anything unless I seek the Lord first. I can't do anything and call it blessed without God's uh, wisdom, without God's guidance. He asked the Lord's permission and, and God said, go. How many things would we avoid if we first asked God's permission? And instead of letting fear make our decisions, letting the wisdom of God make our decisions, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 gives it to us plainly. Don't worry about anything. Instead, come on, say it with me. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. You're wondering why you're not having peace? Have you been seeking the Lord? Have you been worrying more than you're praying? Woo! Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's pray for the will of God over our life. Let's pray asking God for red lights and green lights op and open doors and closed doors. Don't be afraid to ask for a shut door because I'd rather come to a shut door than go through an open door that God never opened. So God, shut the doors, open the doors. And I don't want to do anything, walk through any doors without first praying and seeking you, God. I don't want to go into a battle without seeking you first. I don't want to go trying to change a situation without seeking you first. It's an important example that David gave to us is that before we do anything, we should ask God, should I questions? Ask, should I questions? This area of scripture exposes what to do when there's a struggle. You have a struggle right now? Have you told everyone else about it, but you haven't told God about it? You've sought everyone else's advice, but not the wisdom of God? Well, they're wise in God. God speaks to you too, baby. Should I? Pray first is what I'm saying today. Instead of running to someone else, pray first. In January... January 5th, we begin a 21-day church-wide fast. Put it on your calendar. Because in this church fast is where we seek God together for his wisdom, for his guidance, and seek his discernment, and seek his opportunity, and seek the will of God. You know, there was a time when the disciples who were with Jesus uh, came across a, a boy who who had a demon, and, and they tried to cast the demon out of him, and they couldn't, and they said, uh, and then Jesus came along and cast the demon out just like that, and they said, hey, Jesus, how'd you do that? 
And, the, and Jesus' ultimate response was, there's some things that you cannot achieve without prayer and fasting. So you don't have to wait till January 5th. Maybe some of you just need a social media fast right now. Maybe some of you, like me, need a potato chip fast right now. Man, why do I confess when I get up here? Y'all bring it out of me. But let's get our hearts ready for January 5th, will you? It's not, it's not coming by surprise now. Y'all are ready. Uh, let's see what happens next, 2 Samuel 5, 20 and 21. So David came to Baal Perazim, and he defeated them there. He defeated the Philistines and said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Or as New Jersey folk, water, 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 that's it. So he, sorry, so he named the place Baal Perazim master of breakthroughs. He was declaring a, na a name of God, a description of who God is and what he can do. The master of breakthroughs. The Philistines abandoned their pagan idols there, so David and his men took them away to be burned. That's what you do with idols. Anybody have one of those fires where you put your CDs or your cassette tapes in the fire, maybe your records? Yeah, no, nobody, okay. <laughs> That's what you do with an idol. Um, so we'll be having a campfire over on the property. No, just kidding. Uh, actually, I remember... I remember the day of records, and remember those? People are like, a track. Um, records, and uh, I remember, I'm not going to tell you who brought the records into my house, um, but they were not Christian records by any means on any occasion, and I'll never forget my mother taking one of those records. Oh, I'm telling on you right now. If I tell on me, I can tell on you, right? <laughs> But this is what you do with idols. She broke those records over her knee. My goodness, she snapped them in two because that's what you do with an idol. <laughs> Side note. Um, anyway, David, so what did he do? Before he went to battle, he first went to the master of breakthroughs and then he received one. So what is the path to breakthrough? The path to breakthrough is praying first. When we invite God into the situation, when we invite God into the battle, the enemy has no power. We will find ourselves exhausted if we don't go to God first. Many of us are in places of exhaustion because God never gave you the green light to get into that situation. And some of you are dealing under... Questioning why am I so worn out? Maybe, just maybe, it's because you did not seek the Lord first for his wisdom, but you relied on your own. So let me, rec let me just say it plain, is that pray first is the path to breakthrough. Pray first. Let that be your motto. Pray first. See, this victory over the Philistines was so crazy dramatic and so powerful that David renamed the place that was once called the Valley of Giants and he renamed it Baal Perazim, Master of the Breakthroughs. And when a name is revealed in the Word of God to us, it reveals God's character, what he wants to do and what he can do. And I don't know if you're in a valley of giants, but I want you to know that you serve the master of breakthroughs. If you put an I am on any Hebrew word, it actually makes it plural. So when you hear somebody say, he's the God of the breakthrough, you can say, breakthroughs. Because if he did it before, he can do it again. And again, and again. And again and again. Did you see him do it before? He can do it again and again and again and again. This is our God. He's the God who never runs out of breakthroughs. He doesn't run out of breakthroughs for you nor your family. 
And you know that Baal Perazim, he named it that because it's like a breakthrough of waters, breaking down a dam. And this is how powerful our God is. If you think about a dam that has been set up, but the pressure becomes too strong and that dam crashes, it's because the water pressure is so intense. And I want you to know God's power is intense. And it can break through anything that has set itself up against you and the plan of God for your life and your, for your family's life. I just wish I had a water bottle right now. See if I can. I know some of you would walk out at that point. So we're not doing that. But I really would love to do that. Because God's power is about to burst out in your life as you seek him first. As you pray and as you seek God, his breakthroughs are about to spill over in your life like a flood. So God, I'm asking right now, would you flood this place? with a first a desire to pray, a desire to seek you, to intercede, to seek your face above, above any others, and that you would break through like water through a dam. Let's bring it home. What is a breakthrough? Really quick, get excited about this. It's any significant or sudden, dramatic, advancement, development, or achievement. An act or instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. An instance of breaking through a barrier. Have you faced a barrier? The overcoming of a stalemate. David was calling on the Lord of sudden advancement. Lord, I need a sudden advancement. Are you walking into a season right now or maybe you're in one right now where you need a sudden advancement? You know, the same God who broke through uh, and, and defeated the enemies there is the same God who we serve today. And if he did it for one, he will do it for another. And here's the great thing is once you know that God has broken for, through for you before, you know he can do it again. You know it's his personality. He's not just the God of one breakthrough, but many breakthroughs. And David said a parazim because he knew that in life there's going to be battles. But though there is a battle, we serve the God who is on our side, whose name is Baal Perazim, master of the breakthroughs. Would you please stand? I don't know what you need broken through today. Maybe it's just a mindset. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a situation in your job or, or your family. Maybe you need a breakthrough in a relationship. Maybe you need a breakthrough in clarity, vision. Maybe you need a breakthrough in an opportunity. You don't need to strive for that opportunity. God is the giver of opportunities. He is the master of breakthroughs, and he's got your back. He can bust up anything that tries to get in the way of a child of God. And I want to remind you, it was him who told the sun when to rise. It was him that told the storm to be still. It was him who told the sea when to split. And it was him that told the walls when to break. That's who we serve. And I want to remind you today that though you might be weak, your God is strong. He can break any enemy or any situation in two with just his pinky finger. Your God does not lack for power. His arm is not short to reach you. Your God is a a tremendous force in your life and he loves you and he desires to see you excel because you hold within you the anointing of God when you excel the kingdom of God excels there's nothing too big for your God who needs a breakthrough today who needs a breakthrough today 
Come on, let's stir up the spirit of God. Let's stir him up. Let's just begin to stir your faith in this place. Stir your faith. God, you are the God of my breakthrough. You are the one who masters my breakthroughs. And God, there is nothing too difficult for you. And I bring it before you in prayer right now. God, forgive me for getting distracted. I bring it to you right now. Forgive me for getting fearful. I bring it to you right now. I'm not one who should panic, but I'm one who should stand in faith. God, help me to stand in faith as I watch you work. I might not see it, but God, I know that you are working on my behalf. And there will be a moment when it comes on suddenly, a dramatic shift, because God, you are on the move. And God, I trust you. Do you trust him today? All right, raise those hands one more time. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you say every single hand that is raised right now, and they're declaring to you, God, I need you to break through because I can't do it on my own. I can't do it in my own strength. I don't know if it's a business in here, but God wants to break through in Jesus' name. I don't know if it's been a financial strain, but God wants to break through in Jesus' name. Whatever health issue has been trying to haunt you, I say God will break through in Jesus' name. There's a relationship a family issue, God wants to break through. There's something going on in your job, God wants to break through. So Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, I pray, Lord God, for breakthroughs that would rush like a mighty, mighty river, knocking down all those things that have been tried to be an obstacle to your people, God. God, we receive your breakthrough. In Jesus' name and by faith, Amen and amen. Before we dismiss, I do want to do something special to just for a moment. There's someone who needs a specific spiritual breakthrough. I know that that's many of you need a spiritual breakthrough and God's going to give it to you. But there's a certain category of spiritual breakthrough that I'm talking about right now. And that's maybe your heart has become hardened to God through either circumstances or failed expectations, through whatever. But God wants to break through in your heart today. Maybe you're like, I don't want to have this hard heart anymore towards God. Well, today is that day. Now is that hour. That God says, will you surrender your heart to me? I'm, I'm going to ask every head to be bowed in this place for a moment of privacy, every eye closed. And if that's you today and you can say, I know I'm far from God. I know if I was to breathe my last breath today, I don't know that I would be in eternity with God. Right now I can't say that I'm serving God, but today I want to. I've heard him knocking on the door of my heart and I want to give him my heart. I want to give him my life. I want him to be Lord. Will you raise your hand in this place if that's you? I see you. I see you. I see you. Yes. 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 I see you. I see you. God sees you. God sees your hand reaching to him right now. And I want you to just pray, the, whisper this to the Lord. God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for turning my back on you. Forgive me for faithlessness. Today I make a decision to turn away from all distractions, to turn away from my life that was not in you. Today I turn towards you, Jesus. Be the Lord and be the master of my heart. Break my heart for you today, God. Be my Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> Praise God. There's a party going on in heaven for those of you who made a decision to say yes to Jesus. And we celebrate that decision, the best decision of your life. And may God bless you and keep you. So family, Get ready for your breakthroughs because I believe God has spoken and he is the Lord of the breakthroughs. Go in the name of Jesus. We love you. God bless you.